put two on. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Discussing Fitchburg Now on FATV. I'm your host, Sam Squalia. This week's segment, we are talking with uh, Mary Lee and Jerry from Waterfire Mold. And then we're going to be talking with Joe Bowen and Jesse Olson about the Fitchburg Cultural Council. And then at the end, we're talking Fitchburg Dog Festival. All right, but now cool. we have Waterfire Mold. Welcome. Thanks for having us. Jerry, yes, thank you. Mary Lee, you are the, the owners and founders of Waterfire Mold. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Located right in Fitchburg. We're local. I yep. love Keep it. Keep it local. I'm a big fan of yep. local. <laughs> Keep it local. Yep, we're a full service disaster restoration company. We we provide services to not only Fitchburg but beyond. But of course, you know, our heart resides here in Fitchburg. Um, we do everything that some of the national chains do and more because you get more of a personalized touch. It's important to have a fast response in our industry especially because you know when when you have a fire or you have a flood you know those are key times right there where you need somebody at your house immediately or your business or your property mm -hmm. so yeah we're local yeah i'm not gonna, if if i have a flood in my house i'm not going to wait around i'm going to call exactly. i'm going to oh my god who do i call yeah there's no right. waiting um, we just recently had one the other night where a couple came home from vacation and their water, oh, yeah, their water heater had let seems, go. That seems like the common <sighs> the thing from when you come home from vacation. and oh, It's yeah. about the last thing you want, right? You just had <laughs> yeah. a nice relaxing vacation and of course, yeah, that happens. But Murphy's Law, that Murphy guy, he always pops up. So. Wait, that, well, that's what happened with Crocker Elementary School in Fitchburg. It was over, I believe it was Christmas break, you know, when the, the temperature got real, real low. Yep. And uh, people weren't, no one was checking on the school for multiple days. Right. and. The there pipes. was pipes, yeah, I think condensate lines blew and yep. big, big ice mess and then water everywhere. They had water. I don't know if they didn't have any fire. They might have eventually got mold. That's fortunate. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it, the water and all that's clean up. You know, you can handle that pretty easily. Fires are more devastating. Mm -hmm. So we do deal with that as a part of our process. Um, so you got some pictures of... Uh, yeah of some of the disaster that you've had to clean up? Is, well, that, is that what we got? Yeah, it's a flooded basement. That's uh, what this is? Yeah. Oh, there's water. Pretty oh, common. all that stuff's underwater. The cat box is floating. Can um, we throw this up on the main screen? Oh, you, that floor is uh, actually, what is that, three it, inches of water? Yeah. It, it had approximately three inches of water there. So this is people that came home from uh, vacation? Well, this is a different one. This was, um, this was actually another water heater that just popped, I want to say, last week over in Lemonster, uh, nice young gentleman. The rental property for him and the tenant who rents actually does stay down in the basement because there's a finished basement down oh, there. Oh no. And yeah, so once again, you know, more water, you clean it up. So when something like this happens, should you be the first contact to call? Or do you call your insurance company first? Who do you call first? Well, there's a couple things I, I would recommend for anybody who unfortunately suffers any of these type of disasters is first stop. Just take account of what's going on. Try to document what's happening. Take some pictures. Um, you got to understand that you, you have an insurance policy for a reason. It's a contract. And a part of that contract is that you're going to mitigate the damages. As the homeowner, you're responsible for mitigating your damages, believe it or not. So something like this, of course, you know, you, you're not responsible for removing the water and I wouldn't recommend that because let's face it, we all have basements and at times, you know what, we do plug in extension cords to run something in the basement and when you come home to this and you see that, the last thing you wanna do is start trudging through the water because if there's an extension cord and it's soaked, you could be electrocuted. So our, our tip is actually, if you come across this, if you're in doubt, then stay out. Stay, stay out. out of your basement, save yourself that hassle and call a professional to handle it. Yep. And it's also very important for property owners to know that as a property owner, you have the last say in which contractor you want to hire. So if your insurance company says, oh, call this person or this company, you don't have to go with them. If you want to call somebody local like Waterfire Mold, you have the right to do so. And do you handle like talking to the insurance company? Oh, absolutely. We do. Yeah. Typically what ends up happening is I advise people that there's nothing wrong with contacting your insurance company. You want to notify them that you've had a loss. You want to at least put them on notice so that they have a file and a claim prepared. 
Um, but beyond that, at that point, like Mary Lee had said, it is your responsibility and it is your choice as the homeowner to choose who you're going to use. And that's an important thing to do because if you hire the contractor, meaning Water Fire Mold or any of the other companies, and you're the person contacting them, technically we're working for you. And I typically will come in and I help the homeowner, the insured, the business owner, whoever it is, I help them navigate the insurance process because a lot of us never want to use our insurance. And hopefully you never have yeah. to. Yeah, you, you want to avoid that because yeah. you know, it always ends up going way up for some reason. Well, you don't Sometimes. want to, you, yeah, but you know what, there's, there's a reason you have it and there's a time to use it. Yeah. And usually what we'll do is I'll come in and I'll navigate the process with them, explain to them, okay, well, you know, this is what you have for a deductible. Uh, this is an interesting picture. You look at this living room kitchen combo here, this is a dining room, and you don't see anything wrong with it. If you go to the next slide, you're gonna see, I actually have a thermal image. That whole ceiling is wet. So you see all the dark on that thermal camera? Yeah. Oh. It's completely soaked. What happened? The toilet upstairs. Oh, no. Overflowed. Yep. How long, uh, that's recent in this yep. photo? Yeah. That so was... so you've got to remove that whole ceiling, yep. otherwise it could exactly. cause mold. Right, and that's why... The third, you... the third M. Exactly, the third, the third M. <laughs> so it's really important for a homeowner when they have water damage to contact somebody who is a professional because when you first look at it, you say there's nothing there, but through the right equipment, we can actually see that there is something wrong there and handle it properly. Oh, yeah. If you don't handle it properly, like Jerry said, as a property owner, you are taking that risk, risk and yeah. responsibility, responsibility where the insurance company can say, you know what, you didn't handle it properly, so now you're on the hook for it. And, this and one, it can come out of your pocket. Yeah, and this one's actually a really good example because this is, I came in after the insurance adjuster had already come through and viewed the property and the damages. And what happens is typically an insurance adjuster will come out and they'll set what's called a reserve in the industry. So basically they're putting the insurance carrier on notice to say, hey, we think the amount of damages may be here. But without having some of these tools that we use, that could be vastly different from what the actual amount of damages was. Right. And, and when in this you have, case, it was. And when you have tools like that, you could justify, hey, look, yeah. th this is all water damage. This is exactly. you know, clearly going to be a problem in the future. This needs to be remediated. Absolutely, yeah. Right. And one of the things we do is we take just copious amounts of pictures, 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 mm -hmm. because in the insurance world, if, if you don't have a picture, it didn't happen. Yep. So the damaged sofa, your damaged possessions, stuff like that. It's important to have a professional to come out who knows and who's been through this before because a lot of times what happens is a homeowner or a business owner will just will say, okay, well, my stuff's damaged, so be it. But by documenting, taking pictures of it, inventory and stuff, mm -hmm that will help to go offset potentially your deductible. So if you have a deductible of $1,000, but you have $1,000 worth of damaged contents, technically you're even with the insurance company at that point. And you don't have to absorb that $1,000 worth of a deductible because you already have $1,000 worth of damaged contents. Now you just go shopping. What? <laughs> so what's this? What happened here? This was is a... This, uh, is that, oh, that's water droplets on yeah, the ceiling. Yeah, this oh, was a pipe no. that froze in a ceiling actually down in Hyannis. And um, I was called out to that. I went out at 10 o'clock at night, drove down to Hyannis. It was a vacation home. And um, the pipe had split in the ceiling, so you could see how wet it is. Wiped out that bathroom, a kitchenette, and a full-size bedroom as well with a parquet floor. Mm -hmm. So there was actually water pouring out of the building. And one of the neighbors had seen it and said, wait a second, I think there might be something wrong over there. Yeah. So, like you said with the school, the pipes, they froze. Yep. So, and here we are, we're coming into that especially, time of year. Especially in vacation homes where yep. all you have, you know, if, you know, when you're home and the heat doesn't come on, you're like, whoa, the heat, and you go right. hit the reset button. But if you're not home and you the heat know. doesn't come on, no one's had to hit that reset button. Yep. Exactly. Problem. And it only takes 24 to 48 hours, depending on the humidity levels and so forth, for mold to start growing. And so that's why it's really important as well when you detect and you, you do find water damage to call in a professional. Yeah, no one wants that. No, definitely not. <laughs> we, we kind of compare ourselves to an emergency room. Nobody wants to go to an emergency room, but when you need us, you're glad that the emergency room is open 24 hours and Water Fire Mold Restoration Services offers 24-7 response service. So how did you get in into this business? 
Why did you? Uh, why did you start? Why, why were you like? You know what? The dirt. The dirty. The dirty jobs. Uh, Wait, let's get. Let's do it. It can be too. Let's face it. It can, it can be, be dirty, dirty work. Um, yeah, like the the sewage when yeah. sewage yeah. issues happen. You yeah. clean that up, right? We do. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's an interesting. It's a crappy job, but long somebody's got to do it. Short, yeah, long story short, I had a um, I had a motorcycle accident, and it was it was a near fatal motorcycle accident. And the reason that we're in this business is because I got put into this business after that through through the guidance of you know spiritual, and you know this is our way of giving back because like the people that scooped me up off the ground and flew me into Boston mm -hmm. and helped me and saved my life, at least now we get to give back. I get to give back, I go out. So I actually care, I go out and I see these people and for a lot of them, they're in their, their worst times of their lives. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't see this stuff coming and when it happens, you know, it's the worst thing that's ever happened to them. It's your job, but but you're helping people. Yep. Exactly. Yep. And when people hire us, they're actually helping the communities as well because we give back a lot towards different causes and oh, different charities. How do you in, get that? Within. Um, last year we gave to Fostering Change a local um, charity. Oh, they're going to be on. Kids. They're going to be on our show in a few months. Yep, we we donated approximately two hundred dollars worth of school supplies last year. Nice. This year we're giving back to a student who's in eighth grade, and he needs school supplies. That's involved with a local foster. Um, he's in foster care as well, and he's part of a church. Uh, one of the pictures he showed you was a a pastor and. He, his wife told me that this student needed help with school supplies, so we said we would gladly help. Nice. On top of St. Jude's and Shriners. Yep. You know, I mean, this is, it gives us the ability to, to be able to give back, not only beyond just on the local level with charities, but even some of the national charities, and you know, that's what it's all about. It really is that's what it's all about, because if we can help more people doing this, then we can give more. Mm -hmm. And when you give more and you help more, that's a full circle. It all comes back. So, and I'm vet a big fan. veterans yep. are very de dear to our hearts too, because his father yep. was a veteran, his mother was a veteran. So that's another charity that's that we are part cleanup. of. Oh, we're getting to the fire. Yep. Yep. That was a uh, house here in Fitchburg. Unfortunately, it was it was 99% completed, and then unfortunately it had a fire. So she was about ready to move in, and is this the one fire. on Oak Hill? Um, Milk nope. and Cross Street. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, and you know, I mean, this this is another example, though. So what happened? Well, it it could possibly have been a, a rag with some mineral spirits on it. No, or not really sure what what caused this fire. Uh, quite sure. It Murphy, almost done. Murphy's law, right? But <laughs> yeah. the thing is, is that one of the one of the abilities that we have in having ownership of this company and not being a national franchise we get to set our pricing and when people don't have insurance coverage that's where we specialize because we don't necessarily need to report to a corporate entity so something like that fire where it normally would cost twenty thirty thousand dollars to clean up i could come in and say okay you know what i know you have limited coverage let's help mm -hmm. let's help more than focus on the money aspect of it mm -hmm. So just last year alone, a lot of people with, because typically groundwater is not covered. Unless you have flood insurance and your basement floods, you're not covered. If you have a sump pump and you have a power outage, you're gonna more than most likely have an endorsement on your sump pump and your insurance will cover it up to $5,000, that's, that's it. That's an endorsement, that's a special thing on your insurance. On your policy, right. that's correct. So they'll cover it up to $5,000, but let's say, I highly recommend if you have stuff in your basement and you, you do store, and even if you've never had water down there, put it in storage totes, try to get it elevated. Keep it five inches off the ground. Keep it five yep. inches off the ground <laughs> because, Don't use yep. cardboard. Yep. Huh? Stay away from cardboard. Yeah. Mold really likes cardboard and it will actually help it grow when you store things in cardboard as well. Yeah, this is uh, the fire that we had over in, um, oh, was it that Brookline? That was Brook Brookline, New Hampshire. She had a puffback, so her, f her chimney, as a matter of fact, due to the high winds, she had a fire going, and because of the backdraft on the chimney, it oh. blew out the fire, ah. and then you end up with the smoke damage. Yeah. Well, she didn't realize that that was something that's actually covered by her insurance. So she was gonna try to, not that picture, but the last one, but she was gonna try to clean it up, and when I went and did a tour of the property, I said, I mean, this is a covered loss. This is something that you have coverage for. So instead of having to shoulder this burden, you may want to contact your insurance carrier and look at that. And that's where we specialize, because a lot of people don't understand. Because people don't know. Yeah. I, I really don't know. I've never, you know. 
Yeah. Knock on wood. We hope, we hope yep. you never do. Yeah. <laughs> no, nobody ever does, but I mean, having somebody who's been through it or who knows how to navigate the insurance process, how to guide you down that path, you know, I, I mean, I'm not an insurance adjuster or any, and I don't pretend to be, but having been through a lot of these scenarios, it's easy to look at someone and say, look, there's a good chance that this is going to be a covered loss and you mm -hmm. should you should probably proceed. So you have a website which has all this information on it. Yes. Um, can we put up that website link? Put it up. Right here. Ooh. Oh, there it is. There it is. Right there. Got to do the vandal. Waterfire Mold Restoration Services.com. WFMRS.com. Yes. And we also use Facebook mm -hmm. and we can be found at, at WFMRS. Pretty at easy. WFMRS. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So this right here is a fire that would also happened that in Pittsburgh. That, that was that same one. Yep. And this was one of the vanities that was in one of the bathrooms upstairs. And this was previous before we cleaned it and there was soot everywhere. Um, soot goes in every cr crack and crevice. So it's really important no matter how little the damage is that you get it cleaned up because it can get in through your ventilation system, goes in your kitchens, in your silverware, where your glasses are. If air can get into that space, then soot can get there too. And the next photo is actually um, after we had cleaned it. Ooh. So that's the same piece that we were able to com completely clean and restore it back. That looks a lot better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, believe it or not, the porcelains and some of those materials over time, if, if it's cleaned up quickly, there's a less of a likelihood for it to actually impact and work its way into the surface. But believe it or not, soot can actually irreparably harm stain. and stain a countertop. Mm -hmm. And it will not clean out after it's been sat that way for so long. So, uh, you know, Same unfortunately- thing with red cooling. Yep, yeah, on the carpet and stuff <laughs> like that, yep. So, I mean, I think one of the things for people to understand and to just focus on is that, you know what, when these things do happen, reach out to a qualified professional, look, and find somebody local and give them a call. You don't necessarily have to, you don't have to necessarily go off of your insurance company's recommendation, does nothing wrong with that, but having a local trusted professional is always the best route. It mm -hmm. really is. Sounds good, and I like that you're right in Fitchburg, so you're, you're available. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The family um, that we just went out to a few nights ago that came back from vacation, we were there within a half hour and they- Half they, hour, that's pretty half quick. Hour. Yeah. And they were shocked and thankful that we came out at, it was about seven o'clock at night. I mean, we didn't leave their house till 10, but they were thankful that we got right on it and we were able to be so quickly available when other companies were in Worcester County. What were they told, nobody till Monday? And their insurance company told them, oh, well, do you think you can stay there until tomorrow or do you think you can stay there till Monday? They had no idea how saturated their carpet was. Mm. And as soon as you stepped, you just saw water squishing everywhere. It was like a sponge. Mm. So had they left it, it would have been a bigger mold problem at that point had they left it a few more days. It would have cost it, yeah. more money. And, and it already, too. well, that's a good point, And I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people don't understand that Massachusetts, typically Massachusetts residents have mold coverage as a part of their policy. Uh, the state mandates it. But one of the things that a lot of people don't understand is that coverage is limited. Hmm. Usually it's $10,000. So if you've you got to work to mitigate your own damage to prevent losses. it from molding. Exactly. Yeah. To prevent it from molding. So typically if you have a water damage, the coverage is up to your, your limit on your policy, meaning what is your house worth. So if you have a $200,000 house and you have a water damage, they'll cover you right up to that. But if you leave it and let it go and you neglect it and it turns to mold, they'll cut you a check for $10,000 and say good luck. Mm. And then you're responsible for the rest. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jerry and Mary Lee from Water Fire Mold Restoration Services right in right Fitchburg. In Fitchburg yep. You can go to w WFMRS.com and you can see all more information or follow them on Facebook. They have lots of good pictures like this they post on Facebook. Yep. And videos. Yeah, yeah, and videos. And videos. All right, thanks so much for coming on and telling us about your restoration disaster recovery services. Thanks for thanks having thanks us. Thanks for having us. Yep. All right, so we're going to take a short break and then we're going to be talking about the Fitchburg Cultural Council and all the great cultural activities that we're going on.
you in the moment to get that uh, elusive result that you've been chasing. And so that's, that's what's really motivated me is this idea that I haven't seen my best yet and I really want to. They're all the way to the state championship at Gillette, and they won. This huge accomplishment will go down in SUE history. Yeah, give them a round of applause. They deserve it. We have learned the true meaning of our school motto, love one another. The sun is out, and so will the brightness of our future when we are officially graduates of Fitchburg High School. First time, others were proud of me, and I was honestly proud of myself. Hold on to the people you love, because you never really know how much time is on the clock. Fighters in the line of duty. Now they must once again plan to honor one of the city's bravest. It's got other kids excited who normally might not have thought they could play at the next level. Thinking time will run out, and for the first time ever, the Falcons will fly on. Elderly people who said have been waiting so long for this day, you don't know what this means. And now that Chris is gone, she inherited 400 fathers and mothers. Welcome back to Discussing Fitchburg Now. Up now we have Fitchburg Cultural Council Chair, Joe Bowen, and Hello. future Cultural Council appointee, the appointee, <laughs> Jesse Olson, the events manager at Fitchburg Art Museum, my favorite art museum of all. <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> it's yeah. number one. Yes. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. So Fitchburg, Fitchburg Cultural Council. Yes. My favorite cultural council. <laughs> So we're talking about the annual input meeting? We have an annual meeting. public input meeting. Uh, we are combining it with a grantee reception. It's this coming uh, week from tomorrow at the Fishburg Art Museum from 5 to 7 p.m. What's the date? August 29th. August 29th. Correct. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be an event where you get to mix and mingle with the people who have received grants, mix and mingle with your uh, cultural council members, um, and there are some elected officials coming as well, so you can get to meet and greet with them. And uh, the most important thing is that uh, you get to tell the Cultural Council what you'd like us to fund in the coming grant season. Because we get like 30,000-ish dollars from the state. Correct. Mass Cultural Council mm -hmm. to distribute in the form of grants to artists or, um, you know, the artists. And um, teachers. Anything that's associated yep. with arts, culture, sciences, technologies, humanities. and the humanities. Yep. We fund all kinds of programs. In fact, uh, last year we funded 52 programs in total of about $34,000. $34,000? And uh, last year we had gotten an uptick from the state legislature of $2 million into the Mass Cultural Council funding, mm -hmm. uh, which was really great. And this year they did it again. They Love added it. another two million this year, so mm -hmm. um, special thanks to Senator Tran and Representative Hay for helping to force that through and, and get some extra money coming to the Cultural Council this year. We don't know what that amount is going to be quite yet. We'll know probably in the first of September. Mm -hmm. That's the plan anyway, but I expect it to be up. You know, we went up 6% um, last year, and maybe we'll get 6% again this year. That would be amazing. Yeah, we'll yeah, see Because all of, these, all of these dollars directly impact 
you know, the local economy, mm -hmm. really. Absolutely. Because, you know, we're fun, like for example, salsa on the riverfront. You know, when yes. when we had salsa on the riverfront, oh, here here we go, salsa on the riverfront. Can we throw up this logo? Yeah, there it is. There it is. What, I mean, they do that at on Fridays at Riverfront Park. There's, yes. what, 60, 70 yeah, people, people down go. there. They're doing and, it again this Friday. Yeah, this, for, for oh, this month. Yes, yeah, yep. it's this Friday. It's the last mm -hmm. one of the summer. Go to yep. salsa on the riverfront yes. on Facebook and you can, you can sign up. Mm -hmm. It's free, yes. thanks to the Fitchburg Cultural Council. Well, yes. Exactly. And so you get 70 people there. They go to dinner. They go to they go get coffee beforehand. They go to you know they might go mm -hmm. get a drink afterwards. Yep. You know these are these are little little small dollars that make big impacts really. It really does. So as I had mentioned, we funded 52 programs, and the, the majority of them are all centered around people coming together mm. in in a park or in a specific location or for a certain cause, and uh, it brings people from all over the region to participate in the community, and uh, really helps make the the city of Fitchburg a destination, uh, which is really what we should be doing in this city to attract more businesses that will um, then want to cater to those types of people who come out uh, to the different events and so forth and I, I see win-win all over the place with that. It's a multifaceted kind of a, you know approach yes. to, to building you know our local economy you you can't just focus on one thing Correct. you gotta focus on many many things including many little things mm -hmm. and this is just one big one piece of the puzzle. Correct. And uh, one of the great things we did this this year, this is the first year in several years that the Cultural Council used some of its own locally raised funds to fund a project. Um, typically, we we go year after year, we, we use the Mass Cultural Funds, which have some strict requirements on what we can fund and how we can fund them. But uh, we do have some locally raised funds that we've collected over the years, and uh, we voted as a council to use that to help fund the Activate Mill Street project. Nice. Which uh, just recently opened within the last couple of months, and we now have yoga every Saturday morning there and music at Thursday nights and, and mural artists mural artists yeah. is about 29 murals and there's project. a new kickboxing I thing saw that. that I yes. saw yeah that's I don't remember what what time but if you go to the activate Mill Street Facebook page mm -hmm. and also they have an Instagram Correct. <laughs> activate at activate Mill yes. Street then you can see all everything they're doing over there yeah yeah and so, you know, I mean, what a rejuvenation I've seen of the Cultural Council. Can we show this, this picture up on the big screen here? I mean, look at all of those people in that meeting. Yes. This is the biggest Cultural this Council meeting that I've, that I've ever seen. We had a great participation from the public that night. Normally we sit the public around the table with us because <laughs> uh, usually there's uh, not, not as big of a crowd, but this particular meeting we filled every seat in that room. Mm. Uh, it was pretty incredible and uh, it was really great to have that kind of participation in what we do. And uh, if it's any reflection as to what our public input meeting is going to be like next week, um, I'm pretty excited. Yeah, and last year the public input meeting um, was at the Fitchburg uh, um, Historical Society, and this Correct. year it's at Fitchburg Art Museum. Yes. That's right. Yeah, can we throw this one? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> the Fitchburg Cultural Council Public Input Meeting, August 29th, 5 to 7 p.m. at the Fitchburg Art Museum. That's going to be Correct. that. Nice room downstairs. Yes, yep. and actually what is key is that our 84th regional exhibition is also on display, which was funded by the Fitchburg Cultural Council, so you'll get to see. Full circle. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And see local artists who are right. being supported by the council. The regional, local yeah. regional mm -hmm. artists. Mm -hmm. So and not only will there be grantees there and the members of the public and elected officials, uh, but we have a, a great community partner in Doughboy's Pizza, mm -hmm. downtown Fitchburg. Mm -hmm. They're coming to provide pizza for everybody. They're so, so good. They really are a great partner to have in the community. And uh, so they'll be there. And They donate pizza to our volunteer the efforts. The cleanups that we do. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Good, good community partner, yeah. Doughboys. Yep. Plus, they have a great website they can order from. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so the the public input meeting is open to everyone, and you're encouraged to join. Mm -hmm. It's free. Mm -hmm. There will be refreshments. Mm -hmm. The art museum will be open, so you'll be able to go to the art museum mm -hmm. also and see mm -hmm. the 84th regional exhibition. Yes. And it's actually the last week before it closes, so there's even more. This is your last chance. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, and then you'll be able to sh to talk with other people that have gotten grants, and you can if you're thinking about a project on your own, then you'll be able to, you know, you, talk to them and exactly. say, hey, what have you done? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about doing this, or you can talk to any of the cultural uh, counselors mm -hmm. and talk to them, and then you'll you'll will you have a little run through of how you submit a grant, that kind of thing. 
Yep, that's true. So I will go through what the grant process is. Um, it's extremely easy. It's all done online. As long as you know how much things are going to cost and how much of that you want the Cultural Council to fund, we can talk in pretty pretty good detail as to what you need to know in order to qualify for grant funding. Um, the um, the process is simple, it opens on September 1st, closes on October 15th. We have two training sessions to help people uh, during that season. The first is going to be on September 17th, and the second will be on October 8th. Both are going to be held at Fitchburg State from 6 to 8 p.m. Um, I believe I have a slide with the, the, all the important dates in terms of the uh, the, the trainings and the public meetings and that sort of thing. Can you, can you see that slide, Jared? That with the with the info on the uh, the hey, dates, me. not that one. There it is. Oh, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. The annual public input meeting. The grant application opens sep Sunday, September first. Correct. Yeah, then you have your two trainings: Tuesday, September seventeenth, right. Tuesday, and October. We're, we're holding and yeah, we're holding our monthly council meetings on the same day. Oh, perfect. So people, if they're really interested in seeing what happens at a meeting, they can they can come, come at four thirty, come early, and then at six o'clock we go into the training, and then the grant season uh, application season ends on October fifteenth at midnight, and then the uh, the real grueling work of going through the. 70 plus applications and a book probably about five to 600 pages long. That's when all that work happens and we go application by application to, to see what qualifies. You get a hundred thousand dollars worth of requests <laughs> and you got to pare it down to thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars worth of uh, checks. That's correct. That's a and, difficult job. You know with all the with the increase in popularity of the Cultural Council over the last few years uh, last year we saw an uptick of applications of 11% nice. and we saw we gave out 11% more in awards as well for a number of programs. Mm. So I'm And the more applications you get it, but the more from the state, you know, you can reasonably justify. Correct. Mm. Correct. There's more, you know, the more popular we get as a council, the more requests that we get for funding, the more likely we are to receive more funding in the future. Yeah. And as a council, you have the ability to determine kind of uh, an overall scope of guidelines of what you'd like to fund. And that is helped shaped by your public input meeting. Yes. So if everyone at the public input meeting is like, we want to see more free outdoor events at our parks. Mm. You know, if people keep, for yes. example, then mm -hmm. you know, you as a council might say, okay, one of our focuses is going to be community events in, that activate our parks. Correct. I mean, if, you know. So we, As have, an example. we have the public input meeting specifically to define what our focus is. We have guidelines that are set forth by the Mass Cultural Council, and we just add to that the specific part about what the public wants. And we try to have regular interactions with the public during the year. Uh, several of our council members will go to different events and talk to the members of the public who are there, get their feedback, and use that as some uh, useful information for us to make plans mm -hmm. in the future. Uh, a few months ago, we had a creatives meet and greet, which was a lot of fun. We invited people down uh, just artists and of any type and creatives of any type to it come was down and busy and, and that was at Fitchburg Garden Museum. That was also at Fitchburg Garden yeah. It was very busy. Senator Tran was there. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Doughboy's Pizza. Doughboy's Pizza. <laughs> you were there. Yeah. And there was a lot of yeah. input too. People had a chance to. Ex well, you set it up so nicely with multiple boards for everyone mm -hmm. to participate in, mm -hmm. and the thing where you put your washer and you yeah. vote on whatever you well, want to well, see. One of the primary primary things we got out of that visit or that that event was that artists need help with how to run their business mm -hmm. that was the biggest takeaway is that you know maybe the cultural council can work to put together training programs of some kind for the local creatives to help them operate their business and, and learn how to how to maybe do additional grant writing or get other resources to help them be successful in their work. That's a great idea. Yeah, it was great. Newview Communities, you know, right on Main Street uh, mm -hmm. in Fitchburg, they, they do a lot of small business technical yes. assistance yep. and that kind of thing. So maybe partnering with Newview Communities, the Fitchburg Cultural Council. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect marriage. <laughs> well, and that's a conversation that's come up with the Fitchburg Arts community too, is blending the business and the creative, so. Which Newview yes. Communities exactly. and Fitchburg Art Museum are already <laughs> doing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. there's just so many good connections yep. to make within the community. Yes. Because right. the more we connect, the stronger we are. Mm. That's true. Mm. Yeah. So what else do we got? Anything else with the Cultural Council we wanna chat uh, about? Well, we are always seeking new members. 
And uh, one of the things we want to do is make sure we have a good diversity on the council, to, whether that be demographic or um, skill set. Mm -hmm. And um, we've become pretty well rounded in the last few years, which I'm pretty proud of. Oh, yeah, oh, here's a picture of uh, all the current councillors, right? Can we, can yes, we throw this up? Yes, this is the current council yeah. that is here now. And um, a nice we mix a, of everybody. Yep, yeah, the only thing that's missing from the council right now is a high school representative, uh -huh. high school student. Yes. Uh, our mm -hmm. high school student, Matt, uh, Matt, Matt he uh, is, graduated. He's graduated and he's moved on. And uh, we're out seeking any interested high school student that would like to be a part of the council. They can get in touch with me or and the great thing about having a student counselors. representative on the Fitchburg Cultural Council is we're we're able to directly connect with what the Fitch, what what has happening in the high school. Mm -hmm. Because you know we're yep. we're older. We don't know what's going on in the high school That's necessarily. Right. We mm -hmm. yep. and this way we can get a direct connection with them, so we know if we can fund their program. Right. And it also helps the council understand the program itself. You know, there could be applications coming in for something like, what the heck is this? You know, and it was say, oh, we don't know what it is, so we're just not gonna not gonna fund it. Right. And but there could be a representative on the council that says, Oh, I know what that is, let me explain. <laughs> and then we all go, Oh yeah, maybe this is something that qualifies. Yeah. You know, it's very helpful to have that kind of diversity. So you can help out your whole student body, <laughs> right? If That's you right. join the Fitchburg Cultural Council mm -hmm. as a student representative from from Fitchburg High School, or do you take other? It could be Fitchburg High, it could be Monty Tech. You have to have some connection to Fitchburg uh, to be appointed, mm -hmm. and obviously high school student. Yep. yep. So if you're interested, apply. You can in, in, in how you apply to be on the Fitchburg Cultural Council is you get an application from the mayor's office to be on uh, a, a, a commission, a board of commission, and then you submit your resume. Correct, so you submit a resume with a cover letter, actually, to the mayor's office. Right. And uh, what we've, we've um, worked out with the mayor's office is that the, those that are interested in joining the council is to come and meet the council, come to a meeting or two, get an understanding about what, whether or not this is, uh, your interest actually translates into something mm. that you, you feel you can contribute mm -hmm. to. So before um, you send your application or your resume, yeah. you want to come to a cultural council meeting first. Yes. And see if you're, inter see if you're mm -hmm. actually interested. Correct. And you can find the information on the cultural council meetings they're posted publicly on the city of Fitchburg mm -hmm. website and uh, publicly right you know in the front of City Hall Correct. but also you can go to the Fitchburg Cultural Council Facebook page yes. Correct. and everything's gonna be posted there as well yes. events Facebook events which you can click going and mm -hmm. yes. you'll get a reminder and, and our agendas also are on the city website mm-hmm and uh, yeah, that's what, that's where you can find us. Um, I did have a slide with a bunch of contact information. Oh, oh, this is a good picture. Oh, oh yeah. Can we get the, can we get the contact information slide? Por favor. Oh, there, there it is. is. All right. Thank you. So there's a lot of links, a lot of things to see, a lot of things to know. Uh, we have an email address, Facebook page, Facebook group. There's a, a link Instagram. to the community calendar. We're on Instagram now. That's new this year. Uh, Emanuela has, uh, has created that and has been managing that. It's She's been great. Awesome. She's great. Uh, we have the, the Cultural Council website as, uh, Mass and the Mass Cultural Culture Council. org slash Fitchburg. Correct. And that's where the grant's going to, that's where the grant application's going to be. That's where the grant application will be. That's also where you can find out what programs we have funded in the, uh, in the last season as mm -hmm. well. And if you have any questions, you can just go Cultural Council Fitchburg Go. <laughs> at, at gmail.com. That's right. And just send a, send a question. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, guys, for coming oh, on. Thanks for having us. Chat and culture. Yeah. Yes. I feel more cultured already. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to take a short break. And then we're talking about the Fitchburg Dog Festival. <laughs> I can't wait. Oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be Sunday, yeah. August 25th. Take a short break and we'll talk about it. Chess Chat is the only television program in the United States that presents uh, chess in the way we do it. We try to be entertaining, we try to actually inform, educate uh, our viewers as far as the, the world of chess, which is a, a fascinating world. If more people took up chess, and especially young players, they would actually be exposed to critical thinking, learning logic. I mean, I think this is very valuable for especially youngsters, you know, at early age, to learn to be critical in their thinking, because I want to let people know that chess is a fantastic game, but it's also an art, it's a science, it's a sport. The world of chess has a wealth of information about chess. We could, we could go on forever uh, talking about chess, chess players, chess events. I and my co-host will never run out of material for Chess Chat.
people that I interview motivate me. And there are days that I might be very tired from working my real estate all day, and I think, oh, do I really want to do this? And I walk in here, and the lights and the camera come on, and I meet wonderful people, and voila, I'm motivated. People often ask me, 37 years, haven't you run out of interesting topics or interesting people? And there are so many interesting people. And I love spotlighting someone who hasn't gotten the recognition that I think they deserve. Your function as an interviewer is not to editorialize your opinions, but to get other, draw other people out and ask the right questions that they will, you'll get more and more from them. I'm still hanging in there after nearly 38 years. We're almost up to 38, so they'll have to kick me out because I'm not quitting. Welcome back to Discussing Fitchburg Now. We're on our last segment of the evening and we are talking about one of my favorite topics, which is the Fitchburg Dog Park. And we're talking about the Fitchburg Dog Festival, which is happening Sunday, August 25th at Fitchburg Dog Park from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And the mm -hmm. area immediately surrounding the dog park. And uh, so uh, I, have, I wear a few hats. Like many of us wear a few hats. I am, my other hat is I'm the president of the Fitchburg, Friends of Fitchburg Dogs, which is the nonprofit that supports the Fitchburg Dog Park. And I have here my, pre, my vice president, Veep. <laughs> Brenda yes. Watson. Hi. Yes. Thanks for coming. Oh, thank and you. And then for Rob, me. Rob Talbot. He's uh, also on the board of directors of the Friends of Fitchburg Dogs, helping to support the dog park. And then we have super friend. Joe Bowen, with my other back hat. with his other hat, <laughs> friend of our Fitchburg Dog Park. Yep. So we're chatting Dog Festival. So excited, so excited. Oh my goodness. It's gonna be bigger than it's last gonna year. Be, it's gonna be yes. a lot bigger than last year, and last yeah. year was huge. Yeah. We had the grand opening last year, yeah. in uh, the last weekend of August, which correlated to an International Dog Day, and this year yeah. we're doing the same thing, just bigger, and bigger. we're calling it the Fitchburg Dog Festival. So what, what do we got going? Uh, we have so many things going, and I love that you have that up on the screen. Oh, we got the map. We got the yeah. map up want, on the we screen. This, can we throw this map up on the screen? There we go. Ah. This, is, this is the area. If it doesn't look familiar to you, it's right at the Coolidge Park, right where the pool is, and right at the dog park. We are getting so much from our community about how fun it is to have a dog park, how exciting it is to have a dog park. Uh, you know, it's, it's bringing the dogs together, it's bringing community together, and this is going to be a huge part of community right here. So, oh, yeah. uh, so we have over 35 vendors. That yes. are all all ranging, mostly pet themed, but yep. they range uh, from CBD to pet life insurance mm -hmm. or not life, pet um, health insurance. Health, health insurance. insurance. Yes. Yep. Yes. Health insurance. Yep. And uh, you know, doggy bow ties and doggy clothes, and yep. we have grooming Treats vendors. And cookies. We have vis and you know, uh, they the, you know like Genus Pet Sitting and Central Mass Pet Companion. There's treats, uh, so many oh, homemade dog treats. Yeah, and you can get a little sample for a treat to make sure your dog likes them. Um, so it's always nice to promote those small businesses too. So oh, yeah. absolutely. And so um, with every vendor, we uh, they donate a raffle prize. So we're going to have over 30 raffles, and we're going to and we also have Great Wolf Lodge that donated an overnight stay to Great Wolf Lodge. That's a $200 value awesome. right there so uh, with every with every membership to the friends dog park you get many chances to win all these raffles and one sure. chance to win the great wolf lodge that's overnight so awesome. stay that's so awesome yeah. I mean, we have the great wolf lodge right there in the background so it's awesome yeah, yeah. so um, in addition to the dogs we also have kids stuff we got bounce house and an obstacle course from fun stuff rentals mm -hmm. they're awesome they're awesome. We're going to keep the kids entertained, the dogs entertained, the people entertained. It's going to be so great. We think I'm a family. I know. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I was just going to say I'm pretty excited about the different attractions that are, are part of the festival this year. Yeah. So uh, we're bringing the the float from the parade, Mount oh, Ruffmore. Mount Ruffmore. Oh, oh that's right. Prominent position for people to have their picture taken yeah. with uh, with them and their dog at Mount Ruffmore. Mm -hmm. And we have a canine demonstration. Oh, canine from, Clyde. Um, Winchenden Police Department. The town right? of Winchenden. Yep. Yeah. We were uh, we were hoping to get canine Hangos, our Fitchburg yes, Police our Fitchburg Department. Dog. Uh, one of uh, our soon-to-be 
newest Fitchburg police officer, K9 mm -hmm. Hangos. Right. But K9 Hangos is uh, graduating August 24th. Yes, he is so not ready. He, he might yeah. be able to come on Sunday. Maybe make a little uh, yeah. guest, yeah. Pictures guest with, appearance. Yeah, pictures with Hangos. That would be a, great. Yeah. But we have K9 Clyde and Officer Jim Wierinen from mm -hmm. Winchenden. That's and awesome. he's going to be doing a, a demo, a K9 demo from 11.30 to 12.30 p.m. at the Small Dog Park. So we're going to be taking over the Small Dog Park for these demos for a little while. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I'm really excited about is the dog park training class mm -hmm. that will go yes. on all day. We have a segment of, of the park um, cordoned off uh, specifically for people to learn how to use the dog park. Yep. This was something that we weren't able to have in place last year when we first opened, uh, but we found a great partner to do that and uh, the, the, those classes will be ongoing the entire time. Yes, so Ryan Burnett from Champion K9 uh, Services out in Phillipston, he is That's coming. Awesome. And he's going to do, be doing dog training demos all day mm -hmm. in the special dog training rink, which is going to be a, a little bit down the walkway right next to the large dog park. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we also have Mike Piazza and Frisbee dogs. Oh, the Frisbee is right. going to be so fun. The Frisbee yeah, dogs. Yeah, uh, those did dogs I hear are great. Uh, Frisbee dog was, uh, this, this um, act was at the Bolton Fair recently too, correct? I heard that. I think yeah. I heard the same thing, yeah. So if you missed it at the Bolton Fair, you'll get to see it at the Fitchburg Dog Park. Yep. So the, the he's the number one Frisbee dog Frisbee performer Champer. in the world. Yeah. Is that yeah. what he promotes? That's what he yeah. promotes. So we have him at the Fitchburg Dog Park. And speaking of number one, we also have a, a huge uh, fun thing for everybody is the Chuck Can... Ball. Ball. Chuck Can Ball. Yes, yep. I want to make sure I say that right. The first in the world. The first in the world, and yep. it's so fun. I know you've oh, already played it, right? I've, I've tried it. Yeah, yep. that's good. Yeah, we have, we have, here's the logo for the Chuck Can Ball. So, can you can you go to the, the next picture that shows the little, yeah, can you put that one up on the screen? So this pretty much shows you what it, what it is. Yeah. You use the chuck it, you get the tennis ball, and you try to hit it in the can. That's that's yes. the gist. It is that's right, it, and it's, and a, it's a little ways away, it, so you really have to chuck the ball. Um, but you'd be surprised how accurate that you could get with that chucking. Yeah, I saw them. Um, they were practicing as they were setting up, and I was there. And yeah, he was doing really well. <laughs> yeah. So 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 that game's going to be going on. It's going to be free to practice, right? Because Bruce Willard, who who came up with this game in order to play for dogs, he's using it as a fundraiser uh, for for well for dog parks and for dog services and That's for awesome. rescues. So he has a whole lot of dog causes that he wants to fund mm -hmm. with the Chuck Cam Ball tournaments. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be a blast. We're going to have so much hey, that's fun. It's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he's got a ton of a ton of balls. Yeah. So, speaking of the frisbee dogs, yes. We've got we've got I see the picture just popped up on the screen. Here's Mike Piazza and his famous flying look frisbee dog. Look at that dog. Look, look at, what he's look at, doing. I can't wait to see this dog. Oh yeah, so they've so that show, the frisbee dog show, we have one show at 10:30 a.m. until 11:30 a.m. at the Small Dog Park. So you want to get there early to see Mike Piazza's famous Definitely. flying frisbee dog show. Definitely. And then right after the frisbee dog show starts the canine Clyde officer demo. And in the meanwhile, we'll have WXLO there. Oh yeah. Who's going to be doing a prize wheel? One of four point five XLO is going to yep. be there with their. They're going to be there. Their prize wheel, some music. Um, oh and yeah. Then, Here's yep. the van. There we go. Um, and then we're also going to have Eddie's music in his band, so mm -hmm. that'll be fun. So we'll have well, a lot Brenda of music. Will be singing with Eddie this yes. year again? Oh, yes. Brent, yeah, Brenda wears right. two yes. hats. I She's also right. a yeah. famous musician, two hats. singer, <laughs> and Dog Park VP. And Dog Park yeah. VIP, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's going to be great. It, there's going to be music going on. It's going to be, do we have um, Do we have an ice cream truck? Fidelity and, ice cream truck is coming. Yeah, I think we have a picture cream. of what Put Fidelity in. ice cream truck is offering. I mean, we have so many stuff stuff for kids. Yeah. Really. We've got Bounce Aww. House. We've got the, the 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 obstacle course. We've got a face painter. Crafty Kim is doing face painting. Pet massage. Mm-hmm. Pet massage. And then we have the Fidelity ice cream truck for the yeah. all for the kids. Mm -hmm. And then for the dogs, I mean, yeah. we have pet massage. I know. Tundi, Tundi chair from K9 Paw Formants is doing pet massage. Here's Tundi. She's amazing. She, um, oh I, yeah. I said it. She puts a spell on 
on my dog she, all the time. She's yeah. Yeah, she's, she's, she's got, got the some hands. Kind of calming <laughs> quality. Yeah. For the dogs are just like definitely. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. All the time. I think when she when when she's around, I really think my dog really flips on his on his back just because he's like he knows oh. she's there. <laughs> yeah. Me. Yeah. Exactly. And she massage. I mean, she's really really wonderful. She does a great job. Yeah. And you know, Tundi Tundi says that you know with regular dog massage, it it helps anxious dogs. Right. Especially, and I'm, dog, you know, there's multiple, you know, multiple anxiety. reasons. Yeah. But anxiety seems like the one that really stands yeah. out to me. Yeah. Also, you know, if your dog has people hip problems or oh, whatever yeah. things like that, and yeah. things like that. Yeah, obviously definitely. that would help. But but it seems yeah. to really calm the dogs. Down. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, she puts a spell on Jackson all the time. <laughs> um, but it's going to be such a fun day. We're going to have so much it's fun. It's going to be perfect weather. Yeah. It's going to be like 73 like, degrees. Yeah, that's excellent weather. Um, yeah, and everybody is enjoying the dog park. Everybody is just very excited that we have one. So mm -hmm. I'm glad we have one. And now, and we have a bunch of new grass. Yes. Thanks to Rob. Thanks oh, yeah, to Rob. Rob. Thanks to Rob. Absolutely. Thank you for that work. So what's beautiful. going on with the grass? Um, it's established pretty well. Yeah, it looks the great. The fences are down, the park has opened up. Yeah, because we've had uh, um, a fence cordoning off about a third of the park mm -hmm. for a couple of months because the goal is to grow and establish a hardy grass that lasts. Yes. Mm -hmm. With dogs, <laughs> for dogs, which is difficult, and yeah, because yeah. the best the best surface that we can have is is definitely grass. Mm. You know, a lot of other dog parks have pea stone or mulch or sand. Right. You know, bark we, ha we mulch. have our share of sand. Well, we have a lot of dirt, yes. but it's Definitely not really temporarily. Sand right now. We're gonna have yeah. more grass. Like right? the orange dog park has sand. The gardener, the new dog park, the new gardener dog park has a lot of grass, and it also has a bark mulch. Yeah. Yeah, their agility course is bark mulch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you've done an amazing job um, being the president of the dog park and coordinating and just doing so much for the dog park. I was actually at a. Um, another city close by to us and talking about the dog park and they raved on our, our dog park they're like yeah we want we want to know what you're doing and how you're doing it and and I said well we've got Sam <laughs> <It's easy>. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no it's we you know there were people coming from all different communities to come to our dog park so it's pretty exciting it's nice well, to I, hear. I mean I like, couldn't I, you know I, I'm I, I enjoy helping but really I couldn't do anything that I do without my team of dog park friends, including yeah, obviously all the, you guys, a lot of volunteers. and we probably have a There's good, a lot of us. we probably have yeah. a good dozen yeah. dog park friends yep. that really help out yeah. because you know not one of us can do any of this alone. Uh, right, right. Um, right. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, uh, we when we when we have the when we have this weekend's event, we have about ten or twelve volunteers already. Yeah, are, So we're going to have volunteers helping out uh, throughout the day. Yeah. So it, to, to help keep things safe and to help make sure everyone knows where they're going. Exactly. And, yeah. and everything like that. And other than that, we have we we have a need for general volunteers. If you want to come to the park and help sweep, we need that. You know, because we we're the ones who do that. I know a lot it's of us, people don't realize that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, our DPW helps mow the grass, but you know, we we purchase the the bags that you, people use as around mm, the yep. walking path and in the park to, you know, the free bags that are available. We empty the trash. We physically buy the bags and empty the <laughs> the <laughs> stinky trash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously it's a city park, so we yeah. get a lot of help from the city, but really. It, we rely volunteers, on volunteers. So if absolutely. you can walk around, you know, if you got a few t a few minutes and you pick up missed piles, you know, because it happens. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. If you can sweep Definitely. or anything else you want to do, you can go to FitchburgDogPark.org and get our contact information. You can uh, donate to become a friend of the dog park to support the park. How else can we help? Um, we can come to our dining nights. Come to our dining nights mm -hmm. always. We advertise them at various yep. restaurants in and around the area. And New ones uh, coming going to be advertised soon. Yes. Yeah, so a portion of the proceeds of your dinner purchase goes to help fund the dog park. Those yeah. are always popular. Great, great a lot of yeah, a lot of people don't realize that you know you're going to maybe go out to dinner anyways. So why not come on the night that we're doing our dining night, and that way there, 
a certain mm -hmm. uh, percentage can go back to the dog pot. They, I, like I think people don't really understand that it's not coming out of their pocket. It's just your, whatever your dinner. So the, um, the and restaurant, the buildings. restaurant, yeah. and that's I, know, I was just going to slide right into the restaurants around here have been wonderful. I mean, all of the staff, they're so appreciative and they help out and they love having the dog park. I yeah, mean, they're, they get all excited. Dogs. Yeah, they get very excited. They're like, oh, the dog park's here, you know, to do the dining night. So it's great. It just builds community, you know. Just and plus we can educate people that we even have a dog park. Some, some people don't. Some people still don't know. Some people I still know. don't know. I'm out and about meeting people all the time and there are, it's a, there's a fair number of people who, who aren't aware of it. But most, most people them, have my experience. Like, have you been to the dog park? I have, and I love it. Yeah. Or, Do you get that oh, as well? I haven't yet. Yeah. 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 Where? Yeah. Where is it? But you know, as I was so. saying in the last segment, you know, this, it's a, it's a project that brings people from all over. You know, it makes Definitely. Fitchburg a destination. I was talking and to a woman at the important. park yesterday who was telling me, "Wow, I can't believe how many people come from outside of the city exactly. to come Coming to the from dog New park. Hampshire, right. Maine, and Worcester." And a lot of Townsend, Townsend. Townsend. yeah, Townsend, yeah. Lunenburg, they come from all over. And, it's, yep. it's incredible. It's mm -hmm. it's really nice, and um, I I think a lot of the people that are have been down Coolidge Park all the time, whether it be the pool or whether it be all the sports that are going on, they're pretty excited because you know let's face it, everybody's down at the dog, everybody's down at Coolidge Park. Yep, um, it's the most popular park in the city. It is. <laughs> so you know to have the dog park there is just. <sighs> A marriage made in heaven. So, uh, all of this information, we might, in case we missed anything, or if you want to see all more information and you want to refer back to it and look at all the vendors, we have a website where it has the, all the event link. Oh, look, there it is. Oh, you see? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Fitdogfest.com. You type in F I T D O G F E S T, and it'll take you right to our website event page where it has all the information, mm -hmm. everything's going on, the schedule events. We're going to load there. the map soon. Yep. yep. Who's there and what what they're offering. And um, so, yeah, I mean, but come down. Just come down and yeah. bring your dog, it's, bring oh, the kids. That's, oh, that's another good thing to mention. It is free to attend oh, yeah. the Fitchburg Dog Festival. There is, there is no cost to attend. But what we do encourage is that you visit the Fitchburg Dog Park registration table where you can pay uh, $10 and yep. you'll become a friend of the dog park. You'll be on our mailing list so you know everything that's going on. It'll help support the dog park and you get a chance for a Great Wolf Lodge raffle and you'll probably get, I don't know how many raffle tickets are in the book, but you'll get a book of raffle tickets in order to win from all the different vendors that all come. The vendors. So, I mean, mm -hmm. we're talking super win. Yeah. Win, win, win. Yeah. Your kids come, they get to play for free. Your dogs come, they get to play for free. You could win raffles for a very small donation. Yeah. It's I mean, going it to be a great day. You just don't want to miss it. And you can bring the dogs and check out our new grass. That's no. right. Yes. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming on, and thank you for everything that you do. Oh, for the welcome. Fitchburg Dog Park. We love our dogs. <laughs> I love our dogs. Definitely. Love thanks. our dog park. Yeah. Yes. Brenda Watson, yes. our VP. <laughs> Joe Bowen, our super friend of the dog park. And Rob Talbot, our super board of directors, super friend of the dog park. Can we put up this, uh, this image right uh, just one more time? There we go, the Fitchburg Dog Park, Sunday, August 25th. 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Coolidge Park, 198 Townsend Street, Fitchburg. And thank you, workers. And thank you so much, Workers Credit Union, for sponsoring the event. Definitely. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching, discussing Fitchburg now. We'll see you next week. Perfect.